All right, Sarah, thank you. Let's welcome back in the powerhouse panel. Full panel back with us, former Congresswoman Nan Hayworth, Christopher Arps, and former Deputy Press Secretary at the White House, Hogan Gidley. Um, all right, Nan, I, this is, I don't know what it is. I, maybe it's the Nan effect, but literally every time you've been on with us in 2022, there is a slew of, of retirements uh, on the Democratic side in the House of Representatives. Uh, yesterday, James Langevin announced his retirement and Jerry McInerney who I believe is a, uh, a Democratic congressman in California, I believe. That becomes, that, that makes the number now of retirements heading into the midterms 28. Uh, so that's a record. That's the most we've, we've ever seen in history heading into the midterms. Everybody that retires sets a new record. Um, in 2010, when Republicans picked up 63 seats in the House of Representatives, yeah. 17 Democrats retired. That was Obama's first midterm. Uh, what does that say about where we're heading November 8th? Uh, well, I ran in 2010, and in fact, I won a then-Democratic seat. Uh, we turned it over, right. and it was massive. We had 87 new Republican members at the end of that election cycle. Uh, Republicans have a great opportunity for the reasons we've all been talking about. Democrat policies are awful unfortunately. Uh, policy eventually matters most. Personalities do matter as well, but policies matter most, and the Democrats' policies have been disastrous. But Republicans have to present uh, a great alternative, follow the lead, uh, uh, notably, of the, the Yunkin-Sears victory that we just had in Virginia, right. emphasize the issues that folks care about, emphasize positive solutions, why the Democrats' solutions don't work for America, why Republicans will. We'll, we'll see. Uh, Hogan, to you, just as former Deputy Press Secretary at the White House, um, I'm wondering if we, we're hearing rumors that there could be a, a big course correction from, from Joe Biden today when he addresses the media. Uh, by the way, quickly on, on Glenn Youngkin, and I, and I like when politicians do stuff not that that's not only red meat to the base, but it's also just kind of funny. So day one, Glenn Youngkin comes in in Virginia, first Republican governor there in over a decade, signs 11 executive orders, which is unusual for a governor. We see, you know, presidents do that on day one. Joe Biden signed a, a ton on his first day uh, a year ago. Glenn Youngkin, day one, um, one of his executive orders ended the uh, officially closed the Office of Diversity equity and inclusion in Virginia and took it off the uh, the governor's web page. But what do you expect uh, from Joe Biden today? Do you expect any kind of course correction, anything that, that Democratic candidates in close races can get behind heading into the midterms? Well, what do I expect? Uh, not very much. More the same, which is weak, feckless, um, you know, presence, not even leadership at this point. He's got nothing to talk about in the form of success. And what the congressman pointed out, which is something I kind of discovered in large measure during my time in the White House was policies really do matter because they affect people uh, at the local level. And bad policies bring about bad results. And what you saw was a juxtaposition of uh, America in a position of strength and respect and power all over the world. And now we're just weak because our leader is weak. Remember, when he opens his mouth, it's not just the press corps that hears it or the American people, it's the world. And he can try to course correct all he wants to. Unless right. he's going to decide to jettison the policies of the radical left, this is going to be more of the same, more that the American people don't want to be put in place, not just Republicans, but a massive number of independents. And quite frankly, some of the folks uh, on the Democrat side are rejecting this in large measure as well and realize, at the very least, as the congresswoman can attest to, you just can't run on uh, failures. You have to talk about successes or the promise of successes, but right now it just seems like more cowbell yeah. is what the Democrats are going to push for. And I'm, by the way, you know, Chris, if, if the president, if he does something that, that deserves, uh, you know, applause from us, you know, I'm, I'm happy to give it to him. I, I think we're all rooting for the president. I'm, I'm rooting for America. I'm not, I don't like Joe Biden's policies, the vast majority, but this, this malaise, which is always attached to Jimmy Carter, I, I think it... Hogan, quick question, just quickly, because I, wa I want to get Chris in on this, but did, did Donald Trump ever work with a vocal coach, you know, to, to kind of help him when he was <laughs> delivering speeches? Okay, so that's a yes. I'm, so, um, I'm sorry. No, I'm kidding. That's a no. But, you know, Ronald coach. Reagan was an actor, of course. Um, he, yeah. he worked with a vocal coach to help him deliver some of these stem winders. I know JFK did because he wanted to not lose the Boston accent, but he wanted to become today, day, day, we, we. You know, he just, he, he, he did. He worked with a vocal coach. You, you can read about it. Um, I, I think we're there, Chris, when it comes to Joe Biden. Because every time he speaks, it's just this, ah, 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 
that monotone, you know, very dull, dreary, down. You know, I want to inspire me, you know? Yeah, I don't think we're going to see in much inspiring today. You know, if the president was smart, he'd take a book, a, a, a page out of uh, Bill Clinton's book in 1994 when they were wiped out in the midterms and right. use uh, a term called tri triangulation and try to find some issues that they right. can agree with the Republicans with and try to get something passed to show that they can work uh, with the uh, other side. I don't think they're going to do that because AOC and the squad have such uh, uh, influence over this party. But I'm not expecting that much uh, from this press conference at all, really. It's going to be pretty much the same that we've seen. Just Joe Biden, inspire the American people, make them feel good. Right. The, the Gallup poll saying that 42 percent of Americans now identify as Democrats and 47 percent as Republicans. That didn't surprise me. That did not surprise me. Um, we'll see if it lasts it's to November 8th. It's the fluctuation, Rob, from the yelling and the ASMR whispering. Yeah. That people just, just don't understand. The malaise. So By the way, odd. Nan, as you know, a word Jimmy Carter never used in that malaise no, speech. Right. He never said the word malaise, but everyone says that was a but malaise you know what? speech. You know what, Rob? The rest of us did. Yeah, and we still do. Here we right. go, 40 years later. you felt it. Panel, we'll pick this back it. up top of the hour. Agree with you, and I think we felt it with Joe Biden. Uh, Christopher Arps, thank That's you right. so much. Hogan Gidley, Nan Hayworth, we'll see you guys real soon.